I hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying yourself on this Friday. If you're anything like me, you might be getting a little bit bored with all the monotony, everything going on. And if that's the case for you, if you're only three or four weeks into this isolation or whatever you want to call it, and you're already a little bored, you're already a little anxious, I have an idea for you. Something that might mix it up, change the pace a little bit. Let me tell you about it. If you're anything like me, when you pray, you get in a rut and you tend to find yourself praying the same things over and over and over again. Sometimes our prayers can seem monotonous or cliche. Sometimes they feel emotionless. Sometimes we feel like we're just going through the motions. And in the middle of this crisis, we're telling each other, hey, why don't you pray for one another? Pray for the other people in the church. Send them notes of encouragement. But sometimes it feels like you're doing the same thing over and over again. So how do you break up that monotony? My encouragement and my challenge for you today comes from Paul. Last summer, I was going through a uh, the book of Ephesians with one of my Bible studies. And one of the things we noticed and one of the things that jumped out to us was the passion and care that Paul had as he prayed for the Ephesians. And as he wrote to them, he said, this is what I'm praying for you. This is what I desire that God would do in your life. And as Paul writes it to them, and as we were reading it last summer, it just struck us as powerful. The kinds of things that Paul would wish for the Ephesians to know. The way he wished that they would grow spiritually. The way he that, that Paul wanted them to be encouraged from God's word, from his word to them. So my challenge for you today is that we would read through Ephesians, especially chapters 1, 2, and 3. Now 4, 5, and 6, they have great stuff as well. They have other prayers. But a lot of those prayers we notice were in 1, 2, and 3. And I want to take a minute and read Ephesians chapter 3, just the end of it for you. Paul writes to the Ephesians to encourage them. He says in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21, he says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, being rooted up and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the, the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can think and ask, according to the power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Paul writes this powerful passage to the Ephesians, this powerful prayer. And this is one of many in the first three chapters of Ephesians. Paul's writing them, encouraging them. He's challenging them. He says, pursue God. He's saying, I want you to be rooted. I want you to be grounded. I want your faith to be strengthened. I want you to know that God is able to do more than you can ask and think and imagine. God has a plan. If you're struggling with how do I encourage someone? How do I pray? What should I say? Turn to Ephesians. Turn to most letters that Paul writes. He starts the book out with a prayer. Now the book of Ephesians has more than a few. And that's why I tell you to turn there. But I encourage you. As you think through, how are you praying for one another? How are you encouraging those in our church? What are you telling them? Where are you telling them to hope? Where are you hoping? I pray, as Paul prays, that you'd be rooted in faith, that you'd be founded in love, and that your hope and honor and glory would be in Christ.